All right. Welcome to episode 66 of the Pro Go Batuk Weichi podcast. We're a bit late, but I'm Xiaodai. And I am Gaza. Now, Xiaodai, we're starting a little bit late this week because we were both busy on the weekend. Is that right? Yep, yep. Um, very busy. Um, yes, but we're still going to do this podcast and we're also going to have another one, hopefully, on the weekend. Yes, hopefully. Back yeah. to our normal schedule. Now, Gaza, this week we're going to talk about Chunnan Cup big one and of course some update on the dom- a Chinese domestic scene in the Ahan Tongsan Cup we talk about the Japanese scene still in Honimbo and Gose and then we have a very special US Go Congress uh, US Open Masters tournament to talk about and Korea has almost done with their Nongshim Cup team selection and uh, we might talk a little bit about ourselves gather for a change before we go to the calendar um, so that's the uh, pretty packed schedule today. And uh, but Gaza, let's start with the Chunnan Cup. Uh, and Gaza, what's that sound? What's what that sound, Gaza? What's that sound, Gaza? Sounds like we have a new world champion. Oh wow! Well, I, I thought it was uh, the sound of uh, Bing Sang is slapping himself silly because he couldn't believe <laughs> that he's just won the Chunnan Cup. Um, but yes. But can you believe this, Gaza? Uh, the, so basically what's happened was that the Chunlan Cup semi-final was, has concluded a few months ago, if I'm not wrong. Concluded at the end of last year, in fact. In fact, right. And uh, in that tournament, we had that famous game where uh, Lee Shunhao versus Xin Jin So. So Lee Shunhao completely destroyed Xin Jin So. Uh, it, that, that game was so good that uh, Lee, Lee Yang Ding Shin started accusing Lee Shin Hao cheating with AI. Uh, that's and, right. and, and this whole saga of uh, Yang Ding Shin being suspended for six months, uh, only in, you know, very, very special, uh, well, the, the suspension has a lot of conditions to it and the conditions to this day are still not yet fully been worked out. I think they're still trying to come up with new rules about how Yang Ding Shin can play in other tournaments. But, in this one, let's focus on the two superstars, the stars of the show, Myung Sang Yu and Lee Shun How they made it to the final. Yes, but before we do that, let's give a bit of an overview as to why, mm. how important this tournament is, the yeah. Chunlang Cup. So in, uh, in professional go, just like in many sports, there are tournaments that have international tournaments. Yeah. Um. Baduk is a little well. Go is a little bit different in that a lot of the tournaments that happen in Go are national tournaments. Mm. In that, only players that play in that national sort of federation participate. So Korea, they're called domestic tournaments. So you know, the Japanese tournaments like the Honinbo, uh, uh, Kisei, Meijin, they're only for Japanese players or players that play in the Japanese federations. Mm. Um, same Korea has a lot of tournaments like that as well. The Myungin, the YK construction cup, the GS Caltex cup. They're only for the Korean players yep. and, and China's tournaments like the Guo Shaw, um, the Mingren, they're only for Chinese players. And the majority of go tournaments are national tournaments only. Mm. This, however, in the late 80s, they started making international tournaments where players from any, where any pro player could participate. Mm. So it it was was sort of like a world championship. And um, all of these um, tournaments, all of these tournaments are sort of, they sort of style themselves as the world championship. If If you can see the image on here for anyone that's watching on YouTube in the background. This mm. says the 14th Chunlan Cup World Professional Wei Chi Championship. That's right, yeah. So it calls itself a world championship, and, and a lot of these tournaments do call themselves a world championship. Mm. And among these international tournaments, there's a special selection called World Majors. Mm. And these are the tournaments where that have, you know, roughly two hour to three hour time controls. And they have somewhere between 24 and 32 players, sometimes even 64 players yeah. uh, participating in them. And, you know, to to win one of these, it really is, you know, 
uh, mark of a champion. Like you, you can't really fluke your way, yeah, um, into one of these <clears throat> titles, and it it really is um, the aspiration of a lot of these professional players. Yeah, um, and the Chunlin Cup in particular, it was China's first um, world major, first. Um, the, that was, this was the first time they threw their hat into the world major ring. Um, the first competition was held in 1999. Yep, it's 1998, 1999. But final was uh, in 1999. Right, yes, sorry. The the first final was held in 1999, but yep. the tournament started in 1998. Yep. And they initially held it annually, but then they changed it to every two years, so a two year cycle. Um. Um, so the last Chunlin Cup, the final was held in 2019 and Shinjin So won that one. Mm-hmm. And almost, you know, very soon after that, I think at the beginning of 20, sorry, uh, 2021, sorry, the end of 2021, they had the last Chunlin Cup and Shinjin So won that. And then at the start of 2022, that's when they started this Chunlin Cup with the, uh, round of 24, that's I right. believe. Yep. Yes. And then from the round of 24, um, it went to the round of 16 and then the round of eight and then the round of four. And finally we have the final. Now all of the previous rounds were knockout. So it was just one game. And if you won, you, you, um, went to the next round, otherwise you were eliminated. Mm. But the final is a best of three. Yep. And in this case, um, the time controls are two and a half hours. I'm not, sh- I don't quite remember, um, the Bionioni periods, which is a bit, um, <laughs> yeah, it says, it's, because I, I did make a, a six, it says six, 60 seconds. So I don't know how true this is. It is. No, it is. It's definitely 60 seconds, but I don't recall if it's, um, it says five, uh, it's uh, five, five yeah. times. Yeah. Um, um, one minute Bioyomi. Yeah. Yes. And the winner um, gets a hundred and it's, it's, I think it's about 150,000 US. 150, oh, it's 150,000 US dollars. Yeah. Um, so quite a big prize. Um, not the biggest among world majors. Mm. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a lot bigger than any. Um, domestic prize in Korea, for instance. Mm. Yes. Now, Gaza, this this is a very interesting tournament. The, the history was that, of course, this is, uh, as you mentioned, this was the China's first, uh, uh, the first Chinese uh, hosted tournament, international tournament. And now, as you can see here in the in the past winners table, the first five editions were all won by non Chinese. So I do believe that in the in the early 2000s there was a uh, back then the uh, president of the Chinese Weichi Association actually went to the Chunlan uh, groups uh, you know president uh, Chunlan is a company in China it I believe it's uh, it makes uh, air conditioning air, air conditioners so the president was very worried he was talking to the president of the Chunlan group he was like oh you know no Chinese player has you know won this tournament in fact only uh, the Chinese players have only made the final twice in the first five editions. So he was like, oh, uh, I, I'm really worried that you will uh, cancel this tournament. Uh, and the president of Chunnan says, you know, the fact that the Chinese players are, are losing is even more reason for me to run, keep running this tournament because I, I want to, uh, you know, support the uh, Chinese Weichi scene. So so I guess uh, the president of the Chunnan group uh, the, I think the founder must also must be a huge uh, Weichi fan. Now there was also a rumor uh, last year also that the uh, they they w- Chunlan Group wanted to stop sponsoring this tournament, uh, and apparently the uh, Chinese Weichi Association brought out the big guns. They got Ne Wei Ping to talk to the president of the uh, Chunlan Group directly. Uh, I guess. In uh, in some kind of love, like a like a plea to for them to continue the tournament, uh, that worked. Uh, Chunnan Group has continued to uh, run this tournament, but I don't know for how long. So, 
so so it was one of those tournaments that uh, although very prestigious it was actually at risk of uh, being discontinued now that's another very interesting story about Chunlan Cup apparently when the uh, Samsung Cup and LG Cup uh, started a, doing a uh, combined prelim where the players can uh, enter the preliminary tournament and you know fight their way through to get a spot in the main tournament so the the, the chinese wechi association association suggested to the chunlan group to say hey why don't we uh think about you know making this tournament into like uh, one of those open tournaments where all the pros can enter and you know you set aside some prelim places and uh, you know, so that you get uh, players f fighting through it, the tournament and getting into the tournament by this preliminary tournament. And uh, Chunnan Chunnan Group's response was, uh, you know, having players appointed in this twenty-four player format is uh, is 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 what makes us special. Um, I guess that's a very diplomatic way of saying that. No, we don't want to spread the extra money. Um, you know, <laughs> we just want to keep it keep it down like this. Yeah. So. Yes, but uh, till this day, I, I guess the prize money isn't really that big compared to other world majors. If I'm not wrong, the Samsung Cup or it would be around the, the winners' purse would be around double that. Uh, so it is, yes. and it also runs only once every two years. So it is a much it's a smaller budget tournament. But given that given its history, it started in nineteen before the year two thousand. It still remains one of the most uh, prestigious titles in the world. Yes. Yes. Um, yeah. So Gaza, uh, back to this edition, the star of the show, uh, Byung Sang Il. Now, Byung looks very happy here. Uh, in fact, the sponsors, uh, to prevent him from slapping his face, gave him a trophy that's so big that he needs two hands to hold it. I, I actually made it up. Actually, um, yes, but um, this final was was between Byun Sang Il and, and Lee Chun Hao. That's right. Now, Byun Sang Il, um, a couple of years ago, he won the Kuksu Mountains mm. International Tournament, but it, that one, which is an international tournament, but it's not quite the status of, of a world major. Um, it's a, it's only a sixteen player tournament, and only three Chinese. Mm players participate yeah um it's and it, it is sort of faster time controls that tournament so it's not it's not quite given the status of mm. a world major so he was he was still looking for his first you know world major title yeah whereas Li Jun Hao, he he had a monstrous 2022 mm. um whereas previously he never he'd never um I don't think he's even won a Chinese domestic tournament. Well, not well. I don't think before twenty twenty two he hadn't. Um, but obviously he won the he won the Chujo Lanka domestic tournament. Yeah, and also the I think he won the King of Kings as well. That's right. Yeah, last year. But yeah, otherwise I don't think he'd gotten close to a world major. Yeah, he might have made uh, a semi final once. Yeah, I think he may have reached a semi final once, but. Um, the, yeah, interestingly, Byun sang il and Li jun Hao were both playing in their first world major final mm. in this Chunlan Cup final. Yeah. So obviously both were looking for their first title. Yeah. Um, Li jun Hao, of course, um, had that controversy in the quarterfinals and semifinals where the player he defeated in the quarterfinals, Yang Ding Jin, accused him of using AI in not only his game but in the following game. Mm against Shin Jin so in the semi-final. Um, that's, that's sort of, um, people seem to have uh, not forgotten about it, but just um, moved on. Yeah. Um, and sort of accepted that, you know, whatever whatever happens, Li Jun Hao, you know, is playing again. Well, it's still playing, so whatever. <laughs> yeah. Um, I personally don't think he ever cheated. Um, I think there are some people who still believe that he did. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but uh, interestingly enough, both players come into this final with a bit of patchy form, you would say. Well, why, why do you say that, Gaza? Well, Byun Sang-il, um, 
he was he's he's actually not doing too bad. He has reached the GS a domestic final, the GS Caltex Cup final. Yeah. Um, recently, but he also missed out on Nongshim the Nongshim Cup selection. Ooh. He lost in the Nongshim Cup qualifiers. Yeah, no good in yeah. Korea to mm. um, yes a mu- uh, significantly lower ranked player that he should have wa- beaten um, yeah. An Sung Jun. Mm. Um, so that was a bit of a shock. Uh, that was you know a week just a week ago. Mm. Um, and I think that was that could have been his last game before this Chunlin Cup final. So not a not a yeah, not a great way to uh, prepare yourself. Lee Jun Hao, though, he's basically his whole 2023, well, after the Jar League finished, he's been in quite poor form. He, um, he, he's hit a bit of a slump. Like, I, I do believe that he was in the top five in, in the online Go ratings, but now he's now down to like 11 or something. And even in the Chinese rankings, I think Lee Jun Hao was actually at one point number one over t- over t- having overtaken Kerje. Now he's dropped yeah. back in the official rating back to five or six. So his his form has definitely definitely slumped. Yeah. yeah. And considering how 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 slow the Chinese rankings are to um update, dropping yeah. so far is mm. quite significant. And along yeah, since since the um Jar League, he actually lost his spot in the Asian games because they re did the qualifiers? Yeah, <laughs> and right. he yeah, and he missed out. Yeah, um, and he also is coming off a three. He's also lost his last three games mm. um, prior to this Chunlang Cup. Yeah. Um, not only that, um, he hasn't. He ha- he actually hasn't won a game with the Blackstones since mm. September last year. That's ten months. Yeah. Um, just absolutely astonishing. Astonishing. Yeah, now, and, now, and um, yeah, and even with the whites, even with the white stones, in whereas in twenty twenty two he seemed to be invincible with the white stones. Yeah, and um, he actually lost four of his last. I think he he he'd only gone six wins, four losses in his last ten games with black prior mm-hmm. to this Chilean Cup final. Yeah, yeah. I mean, sorry, with white. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's quite quite crazy. Now, Gaza. Now, for those who, oh, for those of us who can uh, read Chinese, in uh, if you can see, like if you're watching on YouTube, there's a picture in the background, and it's got a lot of Chinese writings in it. Now, basically, uh, it lists down all the organizations that have, they have provided support to running the Chunlan Cup. Now, it says here, providing support the Chongqing uh, Sports. Uh, association, Chongqing, Jiangbei District uh, Government, uh, Chongqing, uh, Chi Pai. So Chi Pai is uh, board games and uh, and card games like bridge, uh, management center, and then pop, uh, probably Chongqing Wei Chi Association. So a lot of Chongqing uh, organizations are supporting this. Uh, Chongqing, of course, is a it's a, a city in China, and it also happens to be where Li Chuanhao and Gu Li is from. So they are actually hosting the finals in Chongqing to try and give Li Chuanhao a bit of a boost. But uh, still, it didn't quite work out. Now, there was an interview uh, bef- uh, before the game even has, has even started. They interview Gu Li, and uh, Gu Li says, "Hopefully, you know, a thank thanks to uh, Yun Chunlan Group for hosting the games in uh, Chongqing." In fact, Gu Li thinks that. This is the first time a final, a Weichi final, has been held in Chongqing. And, and Guli's from Chongqing. He's won eight international titles, but none of Guli's win has come in the city, his, his hometown of Chongqing. Uh, but now this is the first. So they're really, really putting a lot of resources into helping Li Xuanhao win this. But unfortunately, uh, Gaza, I would say that uh, possibly Li Xuanhao just choked a little bit in the final. Well, and should we have a look at the games then? Yeah, it, it, yeah. So, Gaza, but you have to tell me uh, which moves you want to look at. Do you want to look at game one or game two? Oh, well, let's have a look at game one on Monday. Yeah. It happened on Monday. Now, I had a friend of mine. Yeah. Um, explain some of the moves which were bad. Yeah. Let's see if I can remember. Yeah. 
and uh, uh, now I just remember watching the games, and it, uh, at some point it started going into Yose, and I was like, "This is this is way too hard for me to understand." Now, well, the uh, interesting part about both of the games that were played is that there wasn't there wasn't Yun El is known for playing some very hyper aggressive moves. Yeah, um, extremely attacking. Yeah, uh, he didn't seem to do that much in right. these two games. He seemed to play more for territory to get a small lead and to and to preserve that. Yeah, that's as not opposed really to real. just as opposed to just yeah. going hi- hyper aggressive and trying to kill something. Yeah, a big dragon. Yes. Yeah. So now, so so mm-hmm. guys, I I was going to say in this game, this is game game one, the key of game one. We have Bion Sang as black, Li Shen Hao as white. Um, I I I don't know. The next move already stunned stunned me a lot, <laughs> so. I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe, maybe when when you're like a double digit Q, maybe these kind of moves are normal. But this is Pyong Sang Yu, so he just attached and then clamped, and you know that's it. So I I, I really don't know if this is Joseki anymore. So like I don't know. I I don't think I've ever learned any Joseki like this. And this is this could all be all the latest AI you know uh, variations that I don't really understand now. So um, yeah. Yeah, it looked pretty good for Legion how at the start. He mm. seemed to get uh, at least a section of all four corners mm. at some point. Yeah. Yun Sang El then made a bit of um, invasion in the top left. Well, not really an invasion, but he had something in the top left. Yeah. And there was a point where if you go to, I think, move 121. Yeah. So in the top left here, the interesting part about this yeah. is that uh, Black doesn't actually have two eyes yet. No. And the next move that White plays, yeah, um, again, is trying to prevent Black from getting two eyes. Now, I think if Black plays at B18, the 2-2 two, two point, mm. he can make it a co. Right. I think White would play at A17. A17, yeah. throw in throw. first. Yeah, throw in. Throw in first. Uh, I guess yes. take. Yes, and then you throw in again. And yeah, oh. and then I think it, yeah, and then I think it's a. Is this not a co? That's a co. Yeah, down here. Yeah, it's a co. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I think that's what most people were expecting to happen. But mm. Yun Sang ended up playing a move that um, prevented the co. Allowed him to live without the coast. So, firstly, okay. he, he takes it A11, which doesn't create an eye. Yeah. And then instead of playing at the 2 2 point, he plays next to it at the 3 2 point. Nice. When yes. He throws in. Yes. He still throws in, but uh, Black, because because of the two stones, um, yeah, because of that Atari yeah. at yeah. C17, mm. uh, Black, is ele- Black is able to live. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Very nice. Um, yeah. So, yeah. So black lived. I mean, black is able to live without requiring a code. Yeah. yeah. But it still looks like a, a lot of it's yours still an even me. game. Yeah. The it's game was very good. close throughout. And then, if you go to um, move one hundred and forty-one. One hundred and forty-one. Yeah. Yes. Now this is. Mm. This is not a great move by Bjorn Sangil. It's right. very slow. Mm. Instead. Uh, the obvious move, the obvious is to push at O uh, seventeen. O seventeen, yeah, this one. Yes, and then once white blocks, uh, black can actually throw in at the two. Black can actually play at the two two point and create a lot of issues. Ah, uh, like this. Yes. Yeah. So that's that's trouble. So white has to maybe like capture. Um. Yeah, so I, I don't know exactly what the sequence is. Maybe something like this. I don't know. Um, yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm not exactly sure myself. This is yeah. just my. Okay, um, so I I can see I can see how you know the, the liberties are quite tight. So um, yeah, it could be trouble for 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 white. Yeah, there are, there are definitely issues there. Bigger yeah. issues. Than, yes. Yeah. Um. So, then so what, black um, could have played here. Um, yeah, something like that, probably. Yeah. Okay. Yep. 
Well, uh, maybe, yeah, maybe first after the push at 017, instead of immediately going at the 2 2 point, go just go at P18 or N18 first. Yeah, maybe go at P18. Yeah. yeah. And then. Yeah, I mean it's possible, I, but that, that's kind of my point. It's it got to a, a point where it's a very technical yose. So unless you you study it intensely or have it, well, I mean, you, yeah, no. If, if you go at N eighteen and yeah. then yeah, white responds at M eighteen and then you Atari black Ataris. Yeah. So white takes and then you play at the two two point. Yeah, it's it's kind of the it's kind of the same thing. You kind of harney, and then you can maybe pull back like this. I suspect. Yeah. So I. Yeah. Oh. Uh, yeah, it's a bit. Uh, I have to think about it. It's not kind of. Uh, yeah. Level, but uh, I do maybe I do think this honey is maybe a bit necessary. Maybe we can do that. Yeah. Then now white's in trouble, so white can't do that. Um. Yeah. So this honey is pretty annoying. Maybe like that. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's, possibly. That's a lot. It's a lot better than than yeah. what Bjorn Singer ended up playing. Yeah. So. Yeah. But yeah, I, I I'm pretty sure I haven't gotten the the right kind of uh, optimal sequence. But um, yeah, I can see some potential there. It's a bit tricky. Yes. Yeah. Um, but Sang decided to do this, and which Li Shanghao ignored. But uh, it 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 continued being a fairly tense uh, Yose battle. Yeah, and then and then the last thing to to look at is um, move 150 after move 150. Yep. Mm. So what black should do now is descend at J3. J3, like this? Yes. Okay. Um... And this, so this threatens to capture the two white stones above it. Right. Um, but what Bjorn Sangel played is, is, is worse. Yep, he played Because there. of this. Mm. Now... Now white responds there, and and now, if you, if you just go back to the response, black black can't threaten to cut anymore. this anymore. Yeah, because uh, obviously that doesn't work. Um, yeah, yeah, because that doesn't work. Yeah. So what does black do? Black plays where he should have played the first already. Place. Yeah, yeah, but then right, mm. what does white do? So it just pulls back. And then, yeah. Uh, so what white should do mm. is. White should have harnated at L three. Yeah, L three like now. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. I, I guess even even at my level, I would be thinking that kind of one of the obvious things I would think about trying. Um, but yeah, Li, so Li, so supposedly so this so this pullback is a mistake for it by Li Shenhao. Yeah. So basically, Byun Sang Il made a mistake playing at H three, mm. and then Li Shenhao lets him off the hook. Yeah. Um, and that seemed to that seemed to be a a running theme mm. in this game. Um, I can imagine that Li Junhao or Chinese fans would have been very frustrated watching this game, mm. seeing Li Junhao get an advantage only to throw it away, like yeah. literally the next move or a couple of moves later. Yeah. Um, and like I said, th this game, I think it was within five points or within maybe even four points mm. the entire game. Yeah. So it really was a Yose battle. Yeah. Um, but in the end, uh, Byun sang -il, yeah, Li Junhao basically made the last mistake. Yeah. And so uh, Byun sang -il, um got a big enough lead where Li Junhao resigned. Yep. And this was big because this is... The Chunlin Cup, as as we've mentioned, is a Chinese competition. Yeah. And so it uses Chinese rules, which include seven and a half points Komi. So often playing as white um, is preferable yeah. Over practice black because of the large Komi. Yeah. In particular, Li Jun Hao um, does a lot better with white than with black. And in this mm. game, Li Jun Hao was white, but he lost. Mm. So, and yeah. And the best of three, that means he needs to win games two and three. But for game two, he's black. He doesn't have the black stones. Yes. And he's got a terrible record as black. Yes. Like I said, he's lost his last. I think he, he's. He's lost his last 11 games with black prior to the Chunlin Cup final. Mm -hmm. So he needs to break that streak. And this game happened today, Wednesday, yep. as of this recording. Mm. 
So Byun sang was white this time, Lee jun Hao was black. And once again, there wasn't really any hyper-aggressiveness from Byun sang that we usually expect from Byun sang mm. And once again, we see Byun sang make some questionable moves, but then Lee jun Hao, you know, not making the right response. And I think the first occasion of this is move 104. Yeah. Okay, so guys, before we get to that one, yeah. I want to just show you this this one thing that happened here. Um, yeah. So you see how black like or a, a lot earlier have to just made this attachment, um, and you said you wanted to see a hundred and uh, hundred and so hundred and four. Yeah. Yeah. So that yeah that that's actually the move I I, I was very surprised by because. I was watching the commentary because most the commentator was saying, "Well, why doesn't white just come here? That seems like the the normal thing to do." But uh, white made this odd looking move, jump. Yeah. Yes, exactly. But the move that you showed, the push, mm. it's 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 the obvious looking move, yeah. and that's because it's the correct move. Right. Right. Like, okay. There's nothing wrong with it. it yeah. And now, but now with this move, mm. um, black can can play where white should have played. Black can play at d6. Yeah. For move 105. If, if you go back, if yeah. you go back. 105. Yep. Yeah. So black black now instead of the just connect. The wedge, yeah, just yeah. connect. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's an empty triangle, but it's it's where white should have played. So. <laughs> maybe maybe but, white. Why is thinking about making a good shape like this? I don't know. Um, yeah. Yeah, but instead, so black. Now I I remember Legion how made a quite a, a famous wedge that we talked about last year. Mm. Um, perhaps he seems to be a bit too infatuated with wedges because this one wasn't a good one. Oh yeah, okay. And as a result, if you look now, so mm. if you look at, well, if you go to back to maybe move one hundred and twenty or something like that. Yeah. You'll see that white now has a huge region on the lower side. Yeah. And so black black stick on along the eighth row, mm. or along row number eight there. Yeah. Needs to dam like needs to make some serious damage into white's yeah. uh territory. Or or I or I thought the idea was for this black stick over here to attack this white group. Which, uh, that's which, actually yes, that's actually what happened. Which which sounds think... a bit looks a bit far fetched because the white group obviously looks a lot stronger. Yeah. Yes, but I think that um, I don't think that the white group was ever in any serious danger for a professional at least. Yeah. And it was quite interesting that they made these really big dangos yeah. in the middle of the board. Yeah. Um. But the thing is, yeah, black is spending a lot of stones in the middle to get not much territory. Yeah, just this eight stones, which um, you can still run out, which is a nice. Yeah, but interestingly enough, yeah, the, it was still a very close game, like mm. only a few points in it. Yeah. Until, but it, I think at some point, Lee Jun Hao realized that he was behind, mm. and so he played some desperation moves. Yep. Um, at the very end, and. Yeah, his region just got seriously damaged, so he resigned. Yeah, um, and this is still at this point a bit of a Jose going on, um, but yeah, um, so I guess Blacks lost a bit of territory somewhere, uh, maybe somewhere around here. Yeah, the, yeah, that 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 region where all of the where all of the stones were yeah. being played. I think Black could have gotten a lot more points. Yeah, out of oh, that. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, that's that's this whole territory got eaten into by, by white. Um, yeah. yeah. So that's a bit annoying. Um, Legion, then Legion Hell just didn't want to. Yeah. Continue. At this point, Legion Hell just didn't want to have to deal with that. Yeah. So he resigned. So, yeah, he resigned. Called it. Called it GG. GG. Uh, and yeah. uh, and and that's how he uh, ended up with the. Uh, uh, you know, runner-ups prop check over here of fifty thousand USD is still not bad, but uh, I, he must be very disappointed with himself. And I did say in an interview that 
you know, his generation is an extraordinarily talented generation. So you have players like Koje, Fenting Yu, winning world majors at around 17, 18. And uh, he's already 27 or 28. So, so he, he, he does feel that, says, he did say that his age is uh, maybe a little bit older than uh, what you'd expect of uh, uh, someone winning their first ma world major. But, uh, and he, uh, uh, let's just say, I think maybe his performances weren't uh, as great as the ones that he put on display in the semifinal. And this helped the career perennial number three, Bren sang -il, to win his first international title. So yeah. congrats to Bren sang -il. Mind you, though, Byun sang -il, Lee mm. Junhao says he's 27, Byun sang -il is 26. Yeah, I think it's the same so, age as Ke yeah. Yeah, so it's... Mm. It's not... He's not that much. Yeah. Older than Bjorn Sangil, and this is Bjorn Sangil's first world major. Yeah, I never actually, to be honest, I was never, I wasn't sure if Bjorn Sangil would ever win a title of this status. Mm. Um, he always seemed like someone who um, uh, really struggles under under pressure, mm. um, like even more than than most players. Yeah, um, you know when. Especially, like, considering he hasn't actually... He doesn't have that many titles, even in domestic competition. Yeah. I think this is his sixth title in his entire professional career. Mm -hmm. I may be wrong there, but... Yeah. Um, it's definitely under under 10. Um, and, of course, a lot of that is due to Shin Jin So, but Byun sang -il, for his level of ability, probably should have more titles. Yeah. Um, so but... He's finally broken through, um, yeah. like Ding Hao as well this year. He's mm. finally broken through and won his first world major and it's very well deserved. Yep. Um, and, and hopefully he he's able to win some more, reach some more finals. In yeah. The let's, future. Yeah, let's, let's, hope, let's hope so. I, I'm pretty sure we'll see plenty more of Bion Sang Yu in the coming years, Gaza. Um, so that's the Chunlan Cup, another great uh, con competition uh, comes to uh, an end. Uh, looking forward to uh, more competitions to come in the near future. Now, guys, uh, let's uh, dial down the pace a bit and go to uh, the China for a little bit of a domestic update in the Aihan Tongshan Cup. Um, I th I can't recall last time when when what we uh, talked about uh, where we were up to, but. Um, Oh, well, let me see, because yeah. I did um, timestamp it. Okay, um, so yeah. now this Ahan Tongshan Cup is, of course, in Japan, it will be called the uh, Kirirama Agon Cup. Uh, and it's basically, if I'm not wrong, it's like one hour each. And uh, in this tournament, it's a knockout tournament, and it's uh, in the round of 16, and we see the familiar names like Kerje and Ding Hao competing. Uh, now, Ding, Kerje actually beat Fan Ting Yu in the first round, but then in the very next round, lost to Ding Hao. And then Ding Hao, by winning two games, have made it into the second round, which is basically the uh, the semifinals. Uh, and uh, Ding Hao played Gu Zihao, and actually Gu Zihao actually won. Yang Ding Xin beat Tu Xiao Yu in the other semi-final so now the final will be between Gu Zihao and Yang Dingxin and that's not been scheduled yet uh, okay. so that's that's a bit of an update on the Ahan Tongshan well, Cup to, we, to be honest we haven't actually talked about it all in oh, okay. the podcast before so right yeah we just never got around to it but yeah this is it's it's actually got an equivalent in uh, Japan called the Aegon Kiriyama Cup. That's right, yeah. Uh, si they're similar tournaments. I believe the Aegon Kiriyama Cup, though, is two hours each. Mm. So I would be surprised if the Ahan Tongshan Cup was, was not two hours as well. Okay, yeah. And the reason I say this is because the winners mm. of the Aegon Kiriyama Cup and the Ahan Tongshan Cup mm. play each other. It's like a Japan versus China mm. super match. Yep. And I believe that's two hours as well. So I'm not okay. entirely sure how the Ahan Tongshan Cup um, is timed. Mm. I'm not um, all that familiar with uh, Chinese tournaments. Yeah. 
Uh, yeah. It says you, it says in the in Wikipedia though that it's very fast. Mm. Um, it's uh, thirty seconds a move. Yeah. Well, uh, it might, yeah, it might be even faster than I thought. Yeah. So I I I've always thought of Ahan Tong Shang Cup as a, like a fast tournament, but um, I, I really don't know. And I it looks like this tournament was just held in uh, like some kind of office space. Like it's not even it doesn't even have like all the ceremonial, uh, you know, chairs and stage and stuff. None of, none of, none of the stuff that you get in the Chunlan Cup. Um, just people wearing their t-shirts, uh, just you know, playing games. But yeah, yeah. But still, yeah, I just I just checked. It's it's a it's a pretty fast tournament. It's similar to the Young Cup mm. in Japan. Thirty seconds and ten one one minute extra time periods. Okay. Um, so yeah, so that's thirty seconds of move. That is, yeah. yeah. So I guess yeah. the update is that uh, Gu Zihao and Yang Dingxin are in the final, and they will play each other at some point. So yeah, yeah looking forward to whoever comes out on top over there. Now, Gaza from China, we move to Japan for one of the big ones. It's coming to an end almost. Gaza, it's the uh, Honimbo Game Six. Now, Honimbo, of course, is one of the big three titles in japan in the next year will be downgraded it's no longer part of the big three yes that's right and, and it is the longest running domestic mm. major in japan this will be the 78th edition yep um initially started i think in world war ii mm. uh so long ago that gosei gen participated in the first honimbo yeah believe it or not yeah and um yeah, obviously has a lot of prestige, but because of costs, um, it is going to be downgraded next season mm. uh, to a best of five. It's currently a best of seven with each game taking two days. Mm. Next season, it will be a best of five with each game being one day long, I think three hours each. Yeah. Um, so this will be the final. This final is the, is the last time in the foreseeable future at least that it will be two-day finals for the Honimbo. Mm. Now, game six, um, they came into game six with the reigning 11-time champion, Ayama, trailing the challenger, Ichiriki, two games to three. Yep. Which means that Ayama has to win game six. Yep. And now, guys, yes. we were both hoping for uh, game seven, weren't we? So, yeah. Well... Yes, I, I suppose you could say that. Mm. And this game six was actually um, a well-fought game for 90% of the game. Right. And then um, it sort of just became a bit of a... Well, one bad move sort of ruined everything, I think. I, I would say it ruined the game. <laughs> right, yeah. Um, so, uh, if you want to... Did you want to look check out the Kifu? Was there any particular point that you wanted to, to check out in the Kifu? No, 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 not really. Um, yeah. Yeah, but if you can go to the Kifu... Yeah, this is a Kifu. Yeah, so Iyama was white in yeah. this game. Ichiriki was black. Mm -hmm. Now... What something I noticed about this game is I don't think that Ichiriki managed his time very well. Mm. I think that he got to Bioyomi at around well, by move 170 at the very least, he was already in Bioyomi. Yeah. And the the issue though was that there was still a lot left to play mm. at this point. Iyama, I don't think, was in Bioyomi. I think he still had at least half an hour. Yeah. Which is which is okay. Yep. Um and then move 171, I think, was the losing move. 71? I... Move 171, yes. Now, yeah. the first 170 moves, though, you, you couldn't really tell either player apart. Not even the AI mm. could either. Yeah. But then move 171. Now, Ichiriki um, had the idea to make a tiger's mouth with mm. these black stones, which yeah. was the right idea. Mm. The problem was he made the wrong tiger's mouth. Mm, he should have addition. played there at N6. Right. And that gives his stones no problems at all. Mm. 
right? But you'll see what happens, what a Yama does. Yep. Oh, it's With that to... move there at mm. N5, Ichiriki yeah. stones are now a liability. Mm. Because... Um... Oh, there's Atari here. Um, That's Atari. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, so, yeah. So, it looks like Black might have to do an Atari to win this Atari to win this co. Yeah. Um, it, yeah. it should never. Have, it, it it shouldn't even have to be a co. To yeah, be honest. So, no, yeah. that's not good enough. Yeah, that's not gonna really work for black. I don't think. Yeah, it's not gonna work. So yeah, so Ichiki's in trouble. Maybe he didn't see this. A very sharp by um, Yamayuta. Yeah, and yeah, Ichiki resigned. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. 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 Just, it's quite disappointing that in a two-hour game, I mean, sorry, an eight-hour, a two-day game with yeah. eight hours for each side that. Yeah. It ends up being decided by a mistake in time trouble. Yeah, uh, um, it's a pretty bad mistake for uh, for for I think a playoff Chile kids cover. I'd say. Yes. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, but guys, uh, I don't want to spoil this, but uh, Honeyball Game Seven, the day day one, had just happened today. Uh, or game or Game Seven, day one, it happened today. Yes, yes, it, that's right. It, it looked it looked even worse for for Ichiki, uh, I have to say. So, so yeah. Well, yeah. let's have a look at um, the key food for Game Seven because Game Seven actually so Game Six finished last week. Yeah. And obviously Iyama won, so that made it three games each. So we yeah. go to a Game Seven, yeah. and this will be the last. This Game Seven will be the last two day game. Yeah. It'll be the last Honimbo, Honimbo Game 7 as well. Yeah, so it'll also be the last Honimbo Game 7 yeah. because it's going to revert to a best of five. Yeah. So, so this is this is going to be a historic game, so you kind of hope that it's going to be a high-quality game. Yeah. And after day one, which mm. happened today, 70 moves have been played, mm. and it already looks like it's going to be a bit of mm. a dud. Yeah, well, the, the trouble started all the way around here. So Ichiriki is white. Um, Yama Yuta is, is black. So when black Hanade, um so maybe maybe Yam maybe Ichi, Ichiki didn't want to block and then get let the white black cover. But maybe that does does look quite bad. Um, but whatever happened, uh, looks like Ichiriki ended up just running a group, a very lonely group by himself. Um, yeah. So white are running a group. Um, and, yes. yeah, and black it. and black was able to just run out so it's just black a uh, white you know very lonely running by himself over here just no eyes nothing just f running around being bullied around by black stones um and uh and uh and this is how the game ended on the first day uh yes. with you know a witch here and a cut point here for, for white and this group still has no base uh, I, I'm not surprised that AI says black is at 95% because uh, it doesn't look that great for Ichiki. Yes, I, I do think that that white group won't have difficulty living. Mm. Um, I think you can easily make that live no problem. The issue is it's it's doing nothing apart from being alive. Yeah. it's it, White has spent a lot of stones yeah. with very little points and... It really hasn't done much to impact Black's ability to make territory. Black's got some nice mm. real estate on the left. Yep. Um, White hasn't really made done anything on the right yet. Um, yeah, it's just it just seems to be a bit of a, a real liability. Yeah. That, uh, yeah, and it's you know it, it's it's really Ichiriki's own own doing. Yeah. Um... yeah. So, so um, yeah, so it's a bit uh, obviously it's tricky. It, it might he might be able to still come back from this. Uh, White isn't completely lost yet. I mean, stranger things have happened in the world. Yes, of I mean, no groups but, uh, are, are dead. Like, there's yeah. no big dragons 
that will die. Like I said, I think that group will live. Yeah. But the problem is only 70 moves have been played and Ichiriki, I don't know how much time he has left, but mm. um, I mean, he, he, he probably has at least four hours left, but um, he's, he's got to spend his time well. Otherwise, he could get into Byoyomi and still have some s- serious decisions to make. Yeah, so not looking good for Ichiriki. But the games are not over. Let's see what happens. So, looking forward to uh, covering the uh, Honimbo Game Seven maybe next next week. Well, since since Game Seven is tomorrow, did you want to have a guess as to what the sealed move is? Um, guess the sealed move. Um, you did mention is... cut. Yeah, I did. I did. I, I mean, the cut. You see, players like me would would think about the cut, but. You know, the second thought I have is maybe this is a bit too vulgar. Um, I, I I don't know. I don't know. It's uh, maybe cut isn't a isn't the best idea, but it's it's very tempting. It's very tempting this cut over here. Um, but uh, what other ideas do I have? My my I guess my idea is um, yeah maybe I I'll, I'll just go for the cut. But my I guess there's a lot of other ideas I can have. I can just press down his white stone. Um, maybe I'll press down his white stone. You know. Press it. Just play mm-hmm. here. Yeah. I think white can even just extend along the left. Well, it's black's turn. I mean black. Sorry. I think black can just extend along the up up the left. Just up the left. Yeah. Just there or there. Yeah. Either of those two spots. Um, probably. Yeah. Probably the diagonal. Yeah. That one. Okay. Okay. Um, just get more terror. Get more real estate. Yeah, okay. Um, but uh, I, I would say that if you want more real estate, you can just extend over here. That's bigger. But anyway. Oh, yeah, make more of a moyo. Yeah. Um, but anyway, that's uh, yeah, it's a bit hard. Um, or maybe even here might work for me. It's a bit dangerous for black. Uh, I, I'm tempted mm-hmm. by the cut or maybe Hane and then think about the cut later on or just press it down. Maybe the pressing it down is enough as black since I'm leading. So I don't, I don't want to cause too much trouble. Yeah, so that's yeah. my pick. Yes, and we'll talk about the uh, finale of this in the next podcast. Yeah, yeah. So that's it. So that's the uh, Honimbo game seven and six and a lot of food. And okay, so that's the uh, Japanese uh, Japanese scene uh, in terms of the Gose uh, Honimbo. We might cover the Gose a bit later, but... Guys, there's another big tournament in China. It's caused quite a bit of a, a stir uh, because of the uh, participants. Then that's the Chengchi Cup, Gaza. Oh yes. And I can't been. remember where we were up to. I think it might have been uh, up to the semifinals or the quarterfinals. Um, now I guess the biggest news in the Chengchi Cup is the semifinal game between Kerje and Wang Xinghao. This is a unlike other tournaments, I guess nowadays. Uh, this Changchi Cup, even the semi-final is a best of three. So we're gonna get oh, to see okay. uh, Kerjie taking on Wang Xinghao, and I think for many this feels a little bit like the uh, the you know the Chinese number one, uh, where they kind of exchange possibly exchange places. Uh, many people consider Wang Xinghao to be the next Chinese no number one, and that uh, we want to just see whether. He can live up to his reputation. Of course, he's taking on the current Chinese number one Kerje in a best of three. You can yes, see we haven't we haven't actually talked about the Changchi Cup right. yet in a podcast. So maybe if you could give a bit of a background um, on that. So Changchi Cup, if I'm if I'm not wrong, uh, Changchi Cup is run by the um, Ing Cup uh, Federation. So it's the same organization that organizes the Ing Cup. Um, sorry, I might have to. Um, yeah, I might have to. Okay. Um, okay. Sorry, there's a bit of crying. I might have to um, go handle some stuff. But uh, okay, let me yeah. try and look up the Chang Chi Cup. So you said it's it's it involves the Ing Foundation. Does that yeah. mean that it also includes Taiwanese players? Uh, I do believe there is a Taiwanese rep. Selected in yes, here, I but... just noticed that Zhu Hao Hong yeah. is participating in this. Mm. Um, so I'll I'll try and 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 um, yeah. So there, there, there you go. Yeah. 
Um, so what's happened here is that I yeah I can't remember what we have talked about, but um, it's uh, so because it's it's organized by the in uh, organization. Mm-hmm. So it actually uses the in cup rules. Um, so it's actually a very oh, wow. it's like a strange modification of the Chinese rules where they instead of giving a seven point five kumi, they said they give the kumi is eight um, eight points. Um, and if two players are on equal points, a uh, black win. So that's equivalent to 7.5 Kumi. But uh-huh. they also have this system where you can uh, you can buy time with points up to, I think, two times. So um, so I think like maybe like the game goes on for two hours and after two hours, you can buy 30 minutes with two points. And you can do that up to two times, I believe, something like that. So you can, you know, you can actually end up giving twelve points, Kumi, uh, because you have bought time twice. Um, right, and there's no other Buyomi. No, there's no other Buyomi. So, and that's that's the similar to the in cup rules, which are kind of similar. And the in cup rules, of course, the in cup gives the biggest prize money at four hundred thousand USD. But this Changchi Cup is restricted to. China only. Of course, they allow a Taiwanese rep to participate. Um, I guess. I guess. You know, don't want to get into politics, but many people consider you know, Taiwan to be part of China. I think that their, Taiwan's official name is still Republic of China. So yes, but Taiwan, the Taiwan rep is not part of the Chinese Weiqi Association. No, he's part of the Taiwan Taiwan one. So. Yeah. So, but uh, yeah, we do have a you do have a Taiwanese player participating. Unfortunately, he got knocked out by Toja Shi in the first round. Yes, that um, was Xu Hao Hong. Yeah, Xu Hao Hong. And uh, now, interestingly enough, as well, Gu Zi Hao, who's in great form this year, was also knocked out in the first round. Yeah, Gu Zi Hao. Yeah. Um, yes, it really is a who's who of China's yeah. uh, best players. In this Chang Chi Cup, how many players were there? Thirty. Th- it might have been. Th- yeah, I can't remember what it was. It looks like thirty, with uh, two players, uh, Kerje and Ding Hao, mm. getting buys to the second round. Yep. Uh, yeah. So that's yeah. Um, and then you and this is a tournament where you know maybe people thought that uh, it's a bit of a Kerje resurgence uh, because Kerje did. Uh, played. Uh, he beat firstly Zhao Chenyu and then Deng Yifei to make uh, the uh, semi-final. Yes, and this was alongside his Guoshou yeah performance as well. So yeah. he was he was in some pretty good form. Yeah, time. And then Wang Xinghao, of course, as we mentioned, also made the semi-final. So that's pretty good. And yeah. the other side of the semi-final is uh, got Mi Yuting and Zheng Weijie. Uh, Zheng Weijie, of course, a veteran, a former LG Cup winner. Uh, Mi Yuting, two-time MLB Cup winner, and That's a right. lot, a lot of great players have you know f- have fallen already. So of course we, we talked about uh, Ding Hao. He actually fell to Chen Yaoye, um, and then you got Xi Yue already in, in, in eliminated. Li Xuan Hao eliminated in the second round by Zhang Weijie. So uh, you got Xie Ke uh, being eliminated in the first round by Xie Hao. Uh, yeah, no, no, really, no shame, really no shame in that. Yeah. Uh, but uh, one of the Great uh, surprises performances is Yu Jing beating Li Qingcheng in the first round. Go, go, Yu. Um, yes. And uh, yeah, I think I can't remember. There's, there's just too many notable performances to note. But I guess the one to focus on is the Ke Jie versus Wang Xinghao. Uh, best of yes, three. This was a semi final I was very much looking forward to. I'm not very yeah. familiar with too many Ke Jie, mm. um and Wang Xinghao matchups. Yeah. Um, in the past, mm. this is probably them. Them. This was probably going to be their most prominent one. Mm. Um, it looks like they have played twice in the past, but I don't know what the competitions were. And they were. They had one. They were one one, according to Go ratings. They they won one game apiece mm. in prior matchups. Yeah. Um. But, uh, but this time around, uh, Wang Jinghao was too good. Yeah, it was. It was. It was. Uh, he, he put in a good performance. I mean, not not that Kerje. I think necessarily played bad, but I think Wang Jinghao just played a bit better. I think Kerje just made some mistakes, but uh, it does look like uh, Wang Jinghao is 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 really the player to watch now. Now, Gaza, 
I think we've talked about this before, but I just want to show people how high Wang Qing has rated on uh, Go Ratings. He's now fifth. But in China, I think he's, he's just cracked the top 20 uh, in the official rating. So, yeah, of course, he's in 19th or something like yeah. that in China. Still underrated. Still, still a bit underrated. But, you, you know, he's if you look at a statistical model based on his uh, past performances, he's already one of the top players in the world. So, in fact, he's, he, he's actually even rated higher than Bin Sang Hill, who had just won an international title. So, it's definitely well, they're, the one they're to roughly watch. rated the same. Yeah, yeah. roughly rated the same. So uh, definitely the one to watch. Definitely going to be, you know, highly rated already. Uh, he's uh, many. What many would consider the next uh, Chinese number one. In fact, uh, are they playing each other in the LG Cup quarterfinals? Bjorn Sanghil and Wang Jinghao. Yeah, they might have. I think uh, Bjorn Sanghil was also played Wang Jinghao in the Jia League. I think they didn't Wang Jinghao. We won both of them. Um, uh, like possibly, I'm not. Yeah, I can't, can't remember don't what they did in the Jar League, but it looks like they are going to be playing each other yeah. in the quarterfinals of the LG Cup. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, go. Yeah, Wang Jinghao. It's actually, they've actually played twice, and Wang Xinghao has won both times. Yeah. So, yeah, Wang Xinghao is a super, super rising star. So definitely one to watch. Then he's given, uh, you know, uh, Kerjie a, a, a lesson, uh, two zero. Um, so Wang Xinghao's into the final. Now in the other semi-final, we got these two superstars here, uh, Mi Yuting versus Jiang Weijie. Uh, I think uh, Jiang Weijie might have even won the first game. Yes, he uh, won the first game quite convincingly, but then uh, he, he he lost. Mi Yuting won the second game equally as convincingly. Yeah, and then uh, in the third game, I Mi Yuting had won. Uh, now I really like this... Uh, this Chang Chi Cup uh, playing room. It looks like there's some, you know, fans just taking pictures of their photo uh, with their yeah, friends. and you can see, you can see which game is the more popular one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. In the 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 game in the back there, that's the Wang Jinghao Kerjie yeah. semi final. For anyone wondering. Yeah, and there's some journalists and some fans taking photos. I do believe you're allowed to take photos in the first ten minutes, and after that, you're asked to uh, uh, leave the room. Now, and the final of the Chang Chi Cup is also a best of three. I, I do think it's, it hasn't been scheduled yet, so but it will be a cracker in between Wang Xinghao and Mi Yuting. Now, Mi Yuting did say that uh, Wang Xinghao is a very strong opponent and that uh, yeah, it will be very difficult to handle. So I haven't heard uh, Wang Xinghao say anything in the interview yet. I, I'm not sure. Maybe he's not even a big fan of giving interviews. I haven't seen him that that often in interviews. So yeah, he so does do interviews, but I don't know anything that he says because I don't know Chinese. Okay, very good. Next time I'll tell you what he says. Um, so oh, that's the uh, Changchi Cup in the Chinese domestic scene. It's the jump a country to the China's neighbor again to Japan. I guess if you're across, you know, some sea water, that's still a neighbor. I guess. I guess so. Um, so we're going back to Japan. Another big title, Deja Vu. Uh, Deja Vu is not the name of the title, Go Say is. And that's between Yama Yuta and Ichiruki Ryo. Oh, a Yama and Ichiruki are playing in the Honinbo final and the Gose final. Wow. Yes, believe it or not. Um, I mean, it's. Uh, in, 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 in this game, uh, I believe the current Go Say is Ichiruki, if I'm not wrong. Um, uh, the current Go Say is Iyama. Oh, it's actually Iyama. Oh, I think he took it from Ichiyuki, um last year. So, uh, two and, years ago, I think now. Right, two years ago. And uh, what's happened is that uh, Yama has actually raised a 2 0 lead in this best of five. So, are we going to see Yama take two titles, or win two titles versus Ichiyuki? Yes, when was game two played? Um, was it on Monday? Yeah, it might have been, yeah. Or was it even yesterday and I didn't put it in the calendar? <laughs> oh, it might have been... Oh, I, I put it in the calendar. No, it was, um, it, was on, it was on Saturday. Right. That's right, it was on Saturday. I didn't watch that game because uh, I was busy. Yeah, busy. Um, but, um, yeah, Ayama... Did, uh, did you watch the game? Is there anything that you wanted to mention about that? Oh, uh, nothing special. I think um, I think I did. Of course, as with most key, most key I did sprouse to it, but um, I don't recall anything in there that's uh, super special. Um, yeah. So, but uh, it's a good a good win. Um, you know, Japanese code. I don't know how long Yama will continue to 
you know, be in his uh, position as one of the preeminent players, but a cheeky probably for a few more years to come. So very, very fascinating battles between the two. Um, the interesting point about the Gose is that um, the final is actually mm. four hours main time. Mm. Unlike the other minor tournaments, but, sorry, unlike the other majors, the Urza, um, Tengen and Judan, mm. which are three hours each for the final. The Gose is four hours. Mm. It is interesting because the preliminary tournaments are all three hour main time, even for the Gose. But then the final is four hours. Mm. I guess that's what separates it from something like the Tengen. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. Um, so that's the Gose. Um, now, Gaza, now I think we should jump to a, a region that we often... Don't cover, but not for lack of uh, what do you call interest. Uh, we are very interested. That's the U.S. region, and I think uh, in the past week we had the uh, U.S. Go Congress uh, happening, and in the U.S. Go Congress they run a tournament called the U.S. Go Congress Masters tournament, which is a invitational for the top players in the U.S. And they have uh, a play, uh, the top player, one of the top best players is uh, Han Han. He used to play in the Jar League, actually, a five dan from China. Uh, and, yes, uh, I believe the yes the Go Congress is is probably the biggest event mm. in North America. Mm. Um, I I think they hold it annually. Right. Which, yes. Uh, do. Seems do. yes seems incredibly difficult to do with the suck, considering how you know big it is. Uh, there's over a mm. hundred people participating. I think. Yeah. That's, uh, um, that's not bad. Yes, but um, they the Masters, they have a special event called the Masters, which involve North America's strongest players as well as... Such as, such as Ryan Lee? Well, Ryan Lee didn't participate. I don't well, what about Alex Chi? Alex Chi also didn't participate. Oh, then uh, there must be, what's that guy, Kevin Yang? Yeah, Kevin Yang didn't participate okay, either. Yeah, I don't yeah, know yeah. why these players didn't participate. I would have loved to see Alex Chi and Kevin Yang. For so, some reason, uh, they didn't. Okay, wow. Um, perhaps okay. someone in the comments can, who who, who does know why, um, can explain. Yeah, um, but yeah. there was there were some professionals in the um, Masters, as you yes. mentioned. Uh, Han Han, yep, a five down professional from China, former Jar League player. Yep, Eric Louie, who is a North American professional. Mm. Yep. Uh, he's a two darn professional in the yep. North American system. And Taylor Shu. Um, and she is a one darn professional, I believe, from Taiwan. Right. Taiwanese one darn. Yeah, okay. I wonder what her Chinese name is because um, I am not sure. But, uh, but this is actually interesting because the Taiwanese pro has only managed... Three wins out of seven. So, to, so well, this... I believe that she played the other two pros. So that would ah okay. And she may not have won those games. Right. Right. Yeah. Um. um so, okay. So... But still. But still, that that does indicate uh, how strong this uh, field is. In the oh US yes, Masters. it's it's certainly it's certainly possible for for mm. um strong amateurs to beat uh. Mm professionals yeah yeah so um and and you mentioned that you, you noticed a very interesting name there called telegraph go morse so and you're wondering if telegraph go was a, it's actually a real name well in the uh, in the u.s go congress yeah uh in the u.s go page they list the the masters players and and the name there is literally telegraph morse mm. Now I know of a I know of a YouTube channel mm. called Telegraph Go. Yeah. And I believe that gentleman that's run by a gentleman whose surname is Morse. I I, wow. I can't I can't remember to be honest. Mm. But the picture on the US Go website is definitely not the same person mm. that uh, runs the, the Telegraph Go YouTube channel. Right. I, I do want to. I do want to give a shout out though to the Telegraph Go YouTube channel. Um, mm. They're actually a yeah. They they have more subscribers than us. So if you know about us, you, you probably know about him as well. Yeah. But it's a really good channel that that does some in depth analysis 
mm. in English on professional games. Yep. On selected professional games, um, you know, much better analysis than what we provide. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so if if you are interested in in getting some English commentary, yeah. On professional games, I highly recommend the Telegraphco YouTube channel. Uh, I'll put a link in the description. Yeah, um, I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if 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 Telegraph Morse is actually the person in the US Masters, and they just have the wrong photo. Mm, yeah, on the US Go page, it's it, it it may be a mystery that that can be solved but or no. not. Yeah, but um, uh, yeah. Uh, but Interesting name, all the same. Yes, but uh, no matter what uh, happened, uh, we have a uh, Han Han winning. Now Han Han, of course, I think last year we covered this. Han Han also won, and in an interview, Han Han said uh, he couldn't believe how difficult this uh, this U.S. Masters tournament turned out to be. But uh, having a Jalika winning uh, the U.S. Masters seven zero isn't really a surprise to me, Gaza somehow. So, oh yeah, he won all of his games. That's yeah, right. yeah. But uh, so, congrats to Han Han. Uh, I have to say, I look for, I do look forward to what to the day when Han Han will lose a game in the U.S. Masters. But uh, I, I'm not sure when that will happen. Um, so uh, let's see. So that's the uh, U.S. Masters, uh, probably one of the biggest tournaments in the U.S. Uh, calendar. And uh, I honestly didn't check if there's anything happened in Europe, but uh, well, uh, actually, I do want to mention. I do think that the European uh, Congress is very soon, perhaps okay. within the next month. Okay. Um, and uh, where? I'm not sure. I'm not sure where okay. it will. It's in Leip- Leipzig. It's in Leipzig. In oh, that's in Germany. Yeah. Yeah. July. It starts July twenty second. It starts yeah. in three days. Yeah. Oh wow. And uh, and I got a news item on the European Go Federation website saying the six European Championship professional championships start soon. So hopefully, uh, soon means maybe hopefully not now, but uh, yeah, we'll start on the twenty first. Oh, it's already started. Um, yeah, it's, maybe it's uh, one of those things that's already started before. Um, that, yeah, I think we might even cover it. I can't remember. But anyway. Uh, I'm to cover it in the next podcast. Yeah, if it happens. Uh, so that's it for the but US no, I do want to mention one other thing. And I think yeah. there was a question that I asked in the last podcast Yeah. that I think I might have the answer to. Oh. I might have solved it myself. Yeah. Now, the question I asked was, why was Kim Ji Sok not in the Nongshim Cup qualifiers for Korea? Mm. Why is that, Gaza? It turns out that he was at the US Go Congress. Very nice. Playing an exhibition game against Ryan Lee. Oh, wow. wow. Now, I'm not sure if he was in, he, he gave up his, Nongshim, his, his chance of qualifying for the Nongshim Cup to participate in this US Go Congress or if he had other reasons mm. for not participating in the Nongshim Cup. But the US Go Congress did clash with the Korean Nongshim Cup qualifiers, and he did play at the US Go Congress in an exhibition game, but he didn't play at the Nongshim Cup. Right. So I might have the answer to that. Very strange that Kim Ji Sok would not play in the Korean Nongshim Cup qualifiers. Yep. But hey. hopefully it's a it's a one off for him. Yeah. Um, he did thoroughly, like he did thoroughly, he did um, easily beat Ryan Lee, by the way, in that right. exhibition game, but. Damn it. Um, yeah. It seems like both players had fun. Yeah, um, that's, that's good. Uh, nice. so, and that's a great segue to uh, probably one of the last topics on the, of today, which is the uh, Korea Nongshim Cup selection qualification tournament has just concluded, Gaza. Yes. Now, I'll send you a link because I want to show you the how the selection process works yeah. for the Nongshim Cup. So I'll just quickly send you a link here. That's not it. Oh. Okay. Hopefully that one is it. Yes. Okay. Now, if you can, if you're able to click on what I sent you in yep. our secret chat. Okay, okay, you have. Mm-hmm. Great. Now, this is the Nongshim Cup uh, quali- qualification format mm. for Korea. Now, it's in Korean, obviously, yes. but um, the idea is that it works. There are three sections. There are three sort of rounds, right. I guess. Hmm. Um, now, there are 
let me check. Two, there were 223 pro players that entered qualifiers. Mm. Okay, like I said, some players didn't. Yeah. And um, there, are, there are about around about 400 professional players in Korea, so not everyone entered the qualifiers. Yep. But most of them did, and because every every game in the qualifiers is a knockout. If you lose, you're eliminated. Mm. If you win, you keep going. And there were, in the end, there were three players chosen. So 200, they had to play 220 games. Yep. And I think they held it over 12 days. So wow. they really they really condensed mm. this qualifying system. Yep. Um, but basically every player, if the, every professional player had a chance to qualify for the Nongshim Cup, which I don't think you can say the same for China and Japan, but mm. they do structure it so that the stronger players don't have to win as many games. Right, yep. Um, which I think is a good system. Mm-hmm. Um, so at the very yep. beginning, players that are ranked outside the top 32, mm. they play in the first round and you have to win three games. Some There were there were a couple of players that had to win four games. Yep. But most of, most of them, you, you have to win three games. And if right. you do that, if you do that, you go through to the next round. Um, so 20, 24 players made it through from the first round to the second round, and they were joined by 24 seeded players, mm. right? Ranked from 8th to 31. Yep. So 48 players in the second round and... Again, you had to play. You had to win three games to advance. Mm. So forty-eight players got reduced to six, and they were joined by um, six six more seeds, ranked second through to seventh. Mm. Right. Yep. And so twelve players in the final round, and in that round, you had to win two games. And if you won two games, you are on the Nongshim Cup team. Wow! Yeah. So, so for the so for the players outside the top thirty-two, you had to win. You have to win basically eight games to make the Nongshim Cup team, mm. or, or or possibly even nine in a, yep. for a couple of cases. Okay. Yeah. Um. So the the three players that ended up making the squad mm. were Park Jun Hwan. Won Song Jin mm. and Seo Hyun Jun. Yep. Um, now, Shin Jin So, by the way, you may be wondering what about Shin Jin So. Well, Shin Jin So was already seeded onto the team. The, yeah. the highest ranked, the highest player in the Korean rankings, number one in the rankings, mm. already make, automatically is put on the team. Okay. Yep. Um, so that's Shin Jin So. Mm. And then Park Jun Hwan, um, I, th- I believe this is his 12th consecutive. Nongshim Cup team hmm. participation. Um, so all the way back to, to 2013, the 14th competition, uh, 12 times in a row. Hmm. So pretty impressive. Yep. Uh, Won Song Jin, I believe this is his seventh appearance in the Nongshim Cup team, and he was last in it just two years ago. Um, he made the team two years ago, I believe. Yep. I believe in that case he was picked as the wild card. Yep. Because it was Whereas this time in Korea or something. Yep. Yeah. So this time he's qualified directly. Very nice. And Seol Jun. Hmm. Uh, this is actually his first um, time. Yep. In the North Gym Cup team. Yep. So he will be a debutant now. Some some big names that hmm. missed out. Yep. Um. Probably the biggest is Byun Sang Il. Yep. Um, so Byun Sang Il, obviously, he was seeded directly into the final round, and he lost his opening game. He didn't even make the like the the final game. Mm. He lost to An Song Jun, so he didn't even win a game in the qualifiers. Yep. Um, he, he only needed to win two games; couldn't even do one. So pretty disappointing. Yep. Uh, Kim Young Hun. Yep. Uh, number five, I believe, in Korea. He lost two 
Seol Hyun Jun. Um, he was seated as well. So and and that was the first round. That was the first game of the third round. Mm -hmm. So he didn't win a game either. Oh wow! Yep. In the qualifiers, yeah. Uh, Shin Min Jun, uh, ranked number four in Korea. He won his first game, but then he lost to Won Song Jin in the second game. Hmm. Um, so they're probably the three biggest absences or the three biggest upsets. But be the Nongshim Cup has five players in the team. So we've only got four players. The fifth player is a wild card selected by the Korean Baduk Association. So basically after the, you know, after the qualif the four first four players have been determined, the KBA, they, they pick a fifth player. So it's, it's basically to, to cover, you know, any major upsets. Like if, if a really strong player misses like just, by fluke misses out in the qualifiers, just has a bad day. Hmm. They can still be in with the wild card. Yep. Because obviously Korea want want a strong yep. team. They want they want to win the Nongjin Cup. That's that's very debatable, Gaza. Because uh, for the last two editions, I do believe Korea's top five players have all made a team, but uh, they still rely on Sinjin. So so yeah. Yes, that is true. But it, in this case, I I think the hot favorite to be selected through the wild card. Would be Byun Sang Il. Yes. Mm. Uh, number three in Korea. Um, Just won the world title. So. Yes, yes. yes uh... So, out, very slim ch outside chances, Shin Min Jun and Kim Young Hoon. Um... Nobody else has any chance at all, but it's really going to be Byun Sang Il. It's for sure going to be Byun Sang Il. You could yeah. put money on it. Okay, yep. Yeah. Um, and and you, you don't really think anything about of uh, Kang Dong Yun? Oh, yes, I did. I should have mentioned Kang Dong Yoon. I am a big fan of Kang Dong Yoon, but he didn't even, he actually got eliminated in the second round. Oh, wow. Yeah. I think he was the highest ranked player that was seeded into mm. the second round. Yep. Um, but he lost to uh, Pei Kong Suk. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, so he didn't get put through the third round. I, I'm, I'm a big fan of Kang Dong Yoon, but with Byun Sang Il um, not yet qualified, Kang mm. Dong Yoon is not going to be selected. Oh wow! Okay. Mind you, though, I would... Kang Dong Yoon still won four games, I believe, mm. um, in last year's Nongshim Cup. So he was a he was a big reason why they won the Nongshim Cup last year. Yep. And that included that that epic um, quadruple co mm. against Tuol Jiak Shi. Mm. Um, yeah, just a monumental performance from Kang Dong Yoon last year's Nongshim Cup. Um, but I think I think they really have to pick Byun Sang Il, and that's despite the fact that Byun Sang Il has yet to win a game in the Nongshim Cup. Wow! Yeah. Yeah. Oh wow! Yeah. Um, okay, so uh, that's it for the Nongshim Cup selection, Gaza. Um, yeah. Yes, and uh, Gaza. Th apparently, uh, there was a question last week about us. Yeah, I think someone asked a question last week. They mentioned they mentioned something about how you know we're not, we're not we're not uh, household names in the Go community, um, whatever yet, that means. Yet, yet yeah. Um, and all, they were also curious how we got interested in the professional scene. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know. Now, I can I yeah. can give my side if you want. Yeah. Uh, do do tell me, Gaza. Do tell me. Well, I mean, as in terms of how Zhao Dai and, and I met, I'm not sure if people are interested in that. Yeah. But we might we might cover that some other time, I guess. Yeah. But what the reason I got interested in the professional scene is because um, my go club is is um, attended by my local go club is attended by a professional mm. um, ambassador from the Korean Baduk Association. His name is Ahn Young Gil. Yeah. And like he's he's a representative from the Korean Baduk Association. He's he's one of those players like um um Kim Yoon Young used to be. Um where instead of playing competitively in Korea, they go overseas mm. and they basically help spread the game in another country. Yep. I think Kim Yoon Young used to do that in Canada. She's since returned to Korea to to resume her professional career. 
But young Gil, um, for quite a few years, has been in Sydney and helping to spread the game uh, there. Mm. And as a result, he would he would attend the Sydney Go Club and give lessons and also have simultaneous games and things like that. And in a lot of lessons, he would cover professional games. Very nice, yep. And so I knew I knew these names like Lee Chang Ho, Lee Sei Dol, Ayama Yuta, mm. um, Kerje. But he would always he would always start off the lecture by saying, you know, this is a game between, you know, Kerje and Yang Ding Jin or something like that. Yeah. And he would say, you know, this is the this is the Mingren or this is the Samsung Cup or this is the GS Caltex Cup. And, you know, like, and then he would, he would, he would go over some moves in the game and, and some interesting, you know, interesting positions and, and do analysis and things like that. Yeah. Um, but I was, I was always confused by these, by these titles of the, of the tournaments. Like they're always like, most of the tournaments are titled after the sponsors, right? Mm. Yeah. But, you know, in, like, in tennis, you have, like, in other sports, like in tennis and stuff, well, maybe not in tennis, but in other sports, you have things like the World Championship, you know, like the Masters or the Asian Championship or something. Like, often the title would say, would, would give you an idea as, the, as to the prestige of mm. the tournament. Yep. But in Go, it's it's often the tournaments are often just known by their sponsor names. Yeah. And um, I didn't I didn't really understand like how important these tournaments are, or or you know how like the the hierarchy of these tournaments or anything like that. And mm. I, I I got I got curious, mm. so I just started I started looking them up. Yeah. Like another thing that confused me was like they would talk about these Japanese tournaments like. Like I, I knew there were some Japanese tournaments where the games were like two days, mm. but I, all I also I knew that that only Japanese players played in them. Yeah. But then there are these other players from Korea and China that are winning over there, and I'm like, you know, it, it seemed like they didn't really play each other that much. Like yeah. players from Japan playing mm. players from China and Korea, they seem to be isolated. So I was con- confused about that as well. So I started looking that up, and then. You know that I I ended up, you know, d- doing a little bit of research and stuff. I ended up becoming more familiar mm. with how, you know, domestic tournaments and international tournaments worked. But yeah. but often when I found answers, there would be more questions as well because everything's so complicated and confusing. Yeah. But I was just so fascinated by by just the professional system mm. and just how things worked, not only within each country but inter country competition yep um you know that i just kept digging and and digging and then i eventually found out that um not only did japan um start streaming their big games on Mm. youtube yep but korea had an entire channel Mm. tv channel for baduk and they streamed that on youtube as well yeah um and the accessibility, especially of the Korean professional games, um, really hooked me on yeah. the professional system, in particular in Korea. Yeah. And yeah, like, and because the you know because there's just so much happening in the professional world of Go, um, almost every single day. Mm. Um, yeah, it's 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 easy to stay hooked. Mm. And to keep to keep following it, and yeah. um, there there are definitely some hang ups. Like I still can't read Korean yet. Yeah. So um, the Korean Baduk Association website, it doesn't really have an English equivalent. Um. So yeah, there, there's a there's a bit of a struggle there, but um. Yeah. Okay. It, yeah, that's that's basically how I got involved in the professional scene. Yeah, so Gaza, would you say you, you, if you get into a topic, you do tend to uh, dig deep? You wanted to really, uh, you know, get obsessed about a particular topic? Yes. Okay. I, I mean, I would, you wouldn't have to say that outside of Go, you also have other topics that you're also, you know, super into as well. Okay, what are you referring to? 
Well, I mean, would you be? Would you say that you are? You have you know more than a, in a passing interest in uh, maybe something even a bit also a bit more a bit obscure, but something like sumo. Well, yeah, I mean, this is completely off topic because we're talk- this is a <laughs> this is a go podcast. Yeah, but it just so happens that I'm also a very uh, yeah huge fan of of sumo. Yeah, yes. so I guess it, it does kind of uh, you know maybe uh, runs in your uh, runs in your system. Uh, it's in your blood to uh, dig into a topic uh, very deeply um, and get obsessed and uh, you know, kind of find out, try to find out everything about it. Yes, um, Pro- perhaps yes. Yeah, so I think I mean, having you know now that you've given your story, I think my my story is a bit simpler. I think uh, now w- one thing, Gaza, that. That really, uh, when I went to university and I and I met all these smart people, and let's just say my my high school, uh, let's just say it's not a it's not filled with intellectuals, okay? Um, so so the, in, in in university, there's a lot of smart people there. Um, so I, I I'm glad I meet quite a few smart people, and uh, what for whatever reason, it's some kind of chance encountering that uh, at some point at Sydney University, a, a Go Cup got started and. And uh, and go was one of those things, perfect things for me to uh, sink my teeth into to uh, get obsessed about something. So that's how kind of how I got hooked into it. Now I'm ethnic Chinese, and I can understand quite a bit of Chinese. So at university, when I got introduced introduced to this game of go, even though I've always heard of it, but I never really played it seriously. Um, so I kind of got into it, and I started reading all these Chinese materials on it. Uh, like getting some Go magazines from China, getting some Go books, looking at Go videos. It gets kind of, and I, I and then I remember one of the Go first Go magazines I got on the cover was Guli, and then back then I I barely know who Guli is, and I just remember him holding up a uh, holding up the LG Cup trophy, and I, I just remember how cool that was. Uh, you know, Guli, a Chinese player, has won a. Uh, uh, the LG Cup, and then I started reading about the history of the LG Cup, and I, you know, read all about, you know, about all the what's happened in the professional scene, and learned about you know, the Go you know, the legends like Cho Chi Hun and uh, Cho Han Hyun and Nie Wei Ping. Uh, of course, Nie Wei Ping was always big in China. I've always seen his name in newspapers. I mentioned everywhere. Like he, he would be commenting on anything from, you know, like. Uh, Cinema to healthcare to soccer, you know, like he he comments on everything. Like uh, the journalists would mainstream, yeah, like would ring Newey Ping up on anything and everything, and 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 for to a lesser extent, Marshall Chun as well. So their names are always in the papers, and I and I just always have known them as Weichi players, but I have no idea what they actually do and what Weichi is about until I got into university and I started reading about them. Uh, and uh, and uh, and I after finding out about it, it I find it cool. I I kept following the professional scene. I kind of just never stopped following it since the university days, and that's uh that's uh that's almost coming up to uh twenty twenty years in Gaza, believe it or not, uh, very soon. So yeah, so I've been following it for that long. Uh, never you know not followed it, and uh, it, I've when I started following it, it was the era of Guli and Isedo and uh, we have gone past that now uh, we've gone past Park Jun Hwan Kerje and now we're into the era of Sinjin So so still find it very fascinating even after the uh, AlphaGo uh, you know the, the AlphaGo the emergence of AlphaGo and how the emergence of AI I think the the, the human game have, have still not you know decreased in, in terms of its entertainment value uh, in fact it might have even gotten more entertaining um, so, yeah, so I think that's kind of my, my, my story. I, I just, uh, been following it for, uh, that long since university. Uh, it was just a chance uh, that I got introduced to, uh, this game of Go. So, yes. that's um, so that's it. That's it a bit about us. Yeah. And yeah, we, we're not really, we, we don't really post much, um, Prior to this podcast, we didn't really post much online, mm. so we were never really part of the online Go community, whatever mm. that is. Yeah, um, I'm certainly not a not a strong Go player. Yeah, um, I'm I'm really just like I, I obviously am still improving 
and like and love playing Go, but I'm I'm very much a pro Go fanatic. Mm. Um, yeah, and and you were the one that um, wanted to to do this podcast, mm. so um, it's it's really just us talk, it's really just us chatting about professional Go. Yeah, um, we don't really get to do it much. Um, outside the podcast, mm. except for like we chat through text, yeah, but not um, through audio because we don't live in the same, yeah, we d- we don't live in the same city, yeah. Um, so, the- so this is this is really our, our opportunity just for us two to to chat to each other, yeah. Um, now- and it just so happens that that some some people join us, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, and, uh, and and also, of course, we we have a Discord group. Uh, I think the Discord group is is where you know the people who want to rat on Kerjir and join in, uh, and uh, and we probably have uh, a couple of you know online chat groups where we just you know talk about Progo in in those chat groups. But uh, some of them are private, some of them are open. So yeah, but if you yeah, want to join the Discord, of, do join. Yeah. yeah, there are a lot of places where people can talk about. Yeah. Pro Go. I think they there's um uh, life in nineteen by nineteen yep. dot com has a forum. Yeah. There's a forum on the OGS mm. website. Yep. I believe even there's even a Facebook group. Yep. Uh, not specifically about the professional scene, but just about Go players on Facebook. And of course we have our Discord and I think there's at least one other Discord. Yeah. Um and, of and, course on, uh, and there are two subreddits we have there's our subreddit and also the general baduk subreddit as well lots of places yeah. where people can talk about the professional yeah. scene in english that is. yeah and and i i just do hope that uh you know the game of go continues to grow around the world and uh we'll I, personally i'm really looking forward to the development of go in the u.s in the europe region so uh yeah so i guess i, I don't know if what we are doing is uh, promoting go in any way but uh, if it does it did help to for someone to kind of have some an, an avenue for people to explore the interest in pro go uh, I think uh, I'm, I'm satisfied so uh, yeah that's that's it so Gaza uh, have you know, have your closing comment and then we'll move to on the calendar Gaza no I don't really have any closing comments so I think what you said basically reflects my my ideas as well. I do hope that I, I I am happy that there are people that that like to listen, even if they only listen for a minute or so, mm. or they want to skip to certain parts. I know that I do ramble a lot. Uh, I do apologise for that. I'm not really. I I am trying to improve my the rambling. Uh, my my ability to discuss things. Yeah. Um. Yeah, but it, I'm, I'm sure it can be a bit tedious at some at some points. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's just, uh, I mean, it's just, uh, I guess, attack this with energy. I, I just really love that. Uh, there's a show on YouTube about board games, where 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 the person starts the show by saying, "I I, I attack board game reviews with energy" or something like that. So maybe just the uh, the the energy that we need to inject into this uh, E equals to M C squared. I don't know what I'm saying anymore, Gaza. Uh, let's move on. Uh, so Gaza. Let's look at the calendar. Um, yes, I have tried to update the calendar. Yeah. Um, we we are planning to do another podcast on Saturday. Yeah. Right? Or maybe Sunday if yeah. Let's see how if we, we have clashes. But yeah. um, uh, the uh, the Honimbo Game 7 will conclude tomorrow. Tomorrow. Yep. That, that chapter in the Honinbo saga will end. Yes. We also... Now... Internationally, there's not much happening, um, mm. except the women's the women's jar league will have a um, some Korean players. I th- there should be at least one Korean player mm. in the women's jar league tomorrow. Yep. Um, domestically, in Japan, the Senko Cup, the domestic Senko Cup, that is, mm. you, sh- you may be familiar with the international Senko Cup, but this is the domestic one. Mm. The semifinals will take place on Friday. Yep. Um, I I didn't list in the calendar who the semi finalists are, but mm. I believe they are um, Ayumi Suzuki versus New Echo, and Yuno Asami versus Ji Yimin. Yeah, very nice. 
So a couple of veterans there and a couple of up and comers. Yeah. I wouldn't I wouldn't call New Echo and you know Asami up and comers, but but basically they're probably not yet at their peak. Yeah. Um okay. Um, um the final by meanwhile will be played on Sunday. Oh, very nice. Um so <laughs> Mind you, all four of these players, these semi-finalists, will be will qualify for the international Senko Cup, mm. which will be next year. I yep. believe that's how it happens. Yep. In Korea, we have a Yongseong semi-final, and I've given this a special color, and you know the reason for that. It's because Shin Jin So is playing. Yep. And he is playing his rival, one of his rivals, Shin Min Jun. Yep. Who we just beat. 3-0 in the YK Construction Cup. Mm. Um, so that should be a good game. The Yongseong, like the YK Construction Cup, the Yongseong um, is a fast competition. I believe it's 20 minutes with 20 seconds Fisher increment. Mm. Other than that, we have another Korea Kiwon uh, game. We, we've never really discussed the Korea Kiwon, um, so... It's it's a it's a tournament that takes a very long time to run um, because there are just so many games that happen. We will cover it when it gets closer to the pointy end. Um, but in any case, Lee Ji Hyun and Cho Han Seung will be playing on Saturday. Mm. And what do, what do we have in um, China? Jo- well, in uh, China we got the Longxin Cup, which is the, I believe it's just the same name as Yongxiang. And the uh, uh, same name as the Iriose in uh, Japan. So that's happening. I think it's a fast competition. I do believe, I don't know if it's still going on, the Weichi Up Dan comp. I believe this is the Weichi comp that's for pros and it's designed for pros to gain kind of points for upgrading their Dan. So it's not a very a well remunerated or if at all a tournament uh, maybe I, didn't, I don't think the pros even get paid that much to play in this maybe just minimal fees like to, like the, the transport fees you know that kind of thing um, but it's uh, happening uh, apart from that not much else is happening in China um, so that's it for the calendar for this week well just before I do want to mention just in case we have to do the podcast on Sunday mm. there is a big game happening on Sunday not just I'm mm. not referring to the domestic Senko Cup final I'm referring yeah. to another big game yeah do you know what I'm talking about GS Caltex Cup the GS Caltex Cup final Byun sang il the re- the current the mm. recent world champion yep versus Choi Jong, yeah. what a cracker what a that cracker. is going to be! Yes, mm-hmm. yes. Is uh, Choi Jong going to be the second woman to win an open tournament, or will Byung Sang Yu slap his face really hard again? Uh, that's the mystery. Wow! Wow! Um, well, yeah. Okay. <laughs> and uh, with that, I guess Katha, we cover the calendar. It's time to say uh, goodbye. Yes. Goodbye. See yeah. you soon. Hopefully. See you again.